All right, board members, we're gonna call this special meeting to order and we're gonna first, we're gonna welcome our viewing public and we always appreciate people's interest in the business of the district and the support of what we do. But we're having some technical difficulties tonight and having to broadcast in a different way and Mr. Poor, I'll go to you to help better explain what our situation is. Thank you so much. In, in many ways, um, tonight will be almost like a, an old school board meeting uh, that we had prior to pandemic and that we are not able to do YouTube like we many people access our meeting through YouTube. That won't happen tonight. Um, we are one of approximately 50 <coughs> school districts who have lost their internet connection through the state's um, internet line or internet, internet systems. So as a result of that, if you're watching tonight, obviously that's a good sign. You found the, the appropriate way. You can then share with others how to watch and there are three options that are possible. One is to go on to the website and go to www.lrsdtv.org. So go to our website, www.lrsdtv.org. Second option is you can access through your TV and, and the channels that are provided by Comcast, which are Channel 4, or if you're a UVerse customer, you can access it on Channel 99. And, and if you're watching right now, we wouldn't and appreciate you spreading that word. We have contacted board members, our, all of our parents and our public in as thorough a way as we can uh, when it became apparent at five o'clock that we were gonna have this challenge. So we've tried to shoot out multiple messages to try to make everyone aware. The positive thing, uh, as we get to go into the, the first item of public comments, we don't have uh, a public comment. And we also expect every board member to actually be present tonight so it, it eliminated you know, some of the things we would have had with the internet being down that we don't have to necessarily worry about Zoom links. So thank you, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Mr. Poor. Before we go to public comments, board members, I just wanted to make a, a couple of comments just for us for the order of the day. Um, in my religious tradition, we have a phrase called reformed and always reforming. And I think last meeting, we had so much on our docket and we tried really hard to go through that efficiently and effectively, but we, we still ended up quite late in the night, and I think all of us were pretty exhausted. So we're gonna, so we made progress, but we're gonna keep on trying to make progress to have as efficient a meeting and an as effective a meeting so that all voices are heard. And um, so just as a reminder, so if you have a question or comment that you have not been able to, uh, to discuss you know, with the administration ahead of time, or if you have a question or comment that needs to be said for the good of the cause, for the good of the group, then please say that. We, want, we don't wanna leave anybody out. We will not leave anybody out. But we will try to make sure that everybody gets equal opportunity to speak. Yeah, I'll ask you to, as, as we've done in the past, just uh, catch my attention and, and I'll call on you and we'll make sure that, that everybody gets a, an opportunity and um, and if I miss it, somebody, and there may be times I might, then I'm gonna ask you to hold me accountable and make sure that I, you know, that we don't leave anybody out. And then when you do, when we do get a chance to speak, as we listen to one another, encourage everybody to, to stay as focused as we can on our topic at hand and, and be as succinct as possible and still get your point across. So that being said, then we're gonna go to our time of public comments and, and we know that we're gonna have later in the evening, we're gonna have a first reading of a policy that's dealing with uh, some ch possible changes in how we're gonna do po public comments. That's a very important thing for us to discuss, but tonight we will continue to do public comments for the policy and the practices that we've had recently and until or unless we make any changes. So Mr. Poor. Thank you, our written comments tonight, um, I believe there's only uh, seven or eight uh, written comments. The uh, first uh, gentleman is uh, regarding uh, a parent from Pinnacle View Middle School, and this individual's name is Chris DeLarm. Um, he said something needs to be done about the traffic violations before someone gets hurt or killed. There's way too many ignoring the barricades and or moving them to avoid following directions from security. More security seems appropriate, at least, before someone gets hurt. Next comment is from Alice Kuntz. Alice is a, a staff member at Dunbar Middle School. Dear board, my birthday is Friday and I was looking forward to hearing an update on Dunbar's roof and windows this month per the schedule laid out in the fall. 
However, Dunbar is not listed on the agenda, nor is it listed on the February 24th meeting. In fact, there are no details about the agenda items for either week except the public policy part. It is my feeling that if the public can watch the board debate the mask mandate for an hour or more at every board meeting, even when all the votes are known before the vote occurs, then the board can listen to as many comments as the public wishes to make. We've also listened to the board discuss their goals for almost a year now, including special sessions. Input from the public should be the number one priority of the board. Limiting the public to 30 minutes while giving board members unlimited time is not right. A few board members take the time to respond to email. The monthly meeting is the only chance the public has, as, excuse me, as few board members take the time to respond to email, the monthly meeting is the only chance the public has of a guarantee of being heard. Also, as one of the few LRSD staff members who takes the time to attend the entirety of board meetings and speak up about issues we are facing, the section regarding staff comments feels personal. All issues I have brought before the board were brought to building level administration first, every time. Perhaps if the board sees a pattern in issues brought regarding one building in particular, the board should do a deep dive into the issues at that building and take a proactive rather, approach rather than a silence of staff. The board serves at the pleasure of the public, period. Next comment is from Lauren Richardson. She is an LRSD staff member from Man Magnet Middle School. I would like for the next week's parent-teacher conferences to be held by either phone or virtual as the COVID-19 conti cases continue to rise. Even when we were closed because of the ice, I, didn't, I don't feel safe having a lot of extra people in our schools. The board meeting is closed to the public and I believe that the public isn't able to go in person to central office. Please have the same consideration for our teachers. Thank you for your time. Next is Tawanda Harris. Ms. Harris is a parent at Dunbar Middle School. Hello, I'm concerned about the students that need special education. From my understanding, you all don't have the classes anymore there are, and there are a lot of students that need these classes and needs more one-on-one. -on -one. Some of the work that the teachers are giving out different than what they used to be and I believe that things should go back to the way they were before all the new changes in academics as they are confusing some of the students when they say they don't understand some of the lessons. It's serious because we really don't understand and they don't know how to do their work and that's hard on us, the parent as well because a lot of things have changed and it confuses the parents as well. Next person is Miss Amanda Kelly from Roberts Elementary. It is ridiculous that you are still masking up our precious children. The whole world has opened back up and yet you are forcing children who are not at risk to each other or to their teachers to wear masks that don't even work. If you had told me eight years ago when we began our journey with LRSD that I'd be moving my children to private school because of issues like this, I would be shocked. I am shocked. It is so sad that teachers are acting like they're afraid of my sweet 10 year old. Teachers in this district are not letting my 13 year old who struggles with migraine headaches drink water in the classrooms and because that would mean he has to take his mask down to take a drink. It is outrageous. You will continue to lose more great families like ours if you continue with these insane guidelines. Next up is Ms. Donna Chavez who is a Parkview magnet parent. She does provide a link um, and then uh, says schools and school boards have no right. The incentives are a huge mistake. We have no idea about the amount of damage this vaccine could cause for these children. It is experimental, ineffective against COVID, unproven vaccination. If that wasn't true, why would you need incentives? If it were not experimental, effective and proven, incentives would not be required. It is a responsibility of parents and parents only to make medical decisions for these children not the schools, not the school board, not the children, parents and parents guardians only. Finally, the last comment tonight comes from Chandra Smith, who is a parent at Western Hills Elementary. I don't agree with changing Western Hills Elementary to Digital Ignite. I have one kid that went there for all pre-K to fifth grade. Now I have one in second grade that attended, that started in pre-kindergarten as well. I don't know what that the pre-kindergarten was taken away till this year when I signed my youngest up for pre-kindergarten. She won't be able to go there for pre-kindergarten. I think that you all should put pre-kindergarten pre back in Western Hills and keep Western Hills Elementary and do the digital ignite at the old Wilson Elementary School. That building is just sitting there. So that's uh, the public comments that we have for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Poor. And 
a happy birthday wish to Miss Kuntz for tomorrow. We have a couple items of uh, business and action which are for our special meeting and they both have to do with architect recommendations and the first re is regarding the hi Central High School's renovation and Ms. Poor will turn to you in the administration for a presentation on that thank, issue. Thank you very much um, members of the board we um, are kind of excited to bring these recommendations forward because it's a, a step in the progress of, of moving forward and fulfilling the promises that we've made to our public to say that we are going to uh, be inclusive in terms of the, the ability to try to get people involved in selection of things like architects and contractors. It's also a step that lets the planning process begin. And so in very generic terms on both of these action items tonight, please know that getting an architect in place, this is just one of many steps that have to follow. Once, if you, if you approve the selection of the architects tonight, you're gonna get, it's not, we don't even start to work with them yet. All we start to do is to work out our contract initially. Then we have to come back to you and have that approved. So, you know, there is still a span of time before, because that's a, our new policy on the financial part. So, you know, we are gonna try to work out a contract and come back on the 24th. And we may need a placeholder on our agenda as we talk about that later for that item. But it's very possible that we aren't, we may not be able to get that back until March, if that makes sense. Once those architects actually do come in place and everything's approved by you, that's when the excitement begins within both of these projects to have our teams, meaning the school teams, our administrative group, to work with the architects in order to start the design process. The design process will be um, collaborated with, with the general contractor, and we plan to start the contractor interviews at the end of this month and then bring them to you in March, okay? Actually, it's I think the first of March that we start those interviews, I apologize. So those interviews happen in March, and then we'll bring that to you, and, and, and they'll get to start to be a part of the conversation, because there's some magic of having a, a GM, general contractor, and then also having the architect and the team, everybody working together, everybody understanding the, the targets that we want for the, the size and the scope of the project, the money that we want to expend, and everybody starts to work on it to go create buildings like we have with Southwest or at Pinnacle View Middle School. So before I, I turn it over for a very specific recommendation for Central High, I do want to share that we have Mr. Darrell Paradis here with us today, who is our Director of Procurement and has led the process to make sure that we follow all the guidelines that are established by the state, as well as the policies that we have within the district. And then of course, our Chief Deputy, Mr. Kelsey Bailey, um, who's been a part of uh, this effort. And finally, Mr. Kevin Yarberry, who's our Director of Facilities, who also took part in the interviews. Mr. Bailey, uh, is there anything that I missed that you would like to add before we turn this item over? I, I want to do that once we get into the item. So I, I just want to do this background, and, and Mr. Adams, if it's okay, we'll move into the recommendation for Central High. Is that all right? Please. Okay, and so um, I don't know, Mr. Bailey or uh, Mr. Paradis, if you will come up and just share a little bit about our process. Essentially, uh, good evening. Good evening, okay. Mr. Adams, Board of Directors, Mr. Poor. Uh, we follow the statute. There is a statute concerning the selection process for architects. It's a non-competitive bidding process, and we primarily base the selection on qualifications. Uh, the, the statute essentially says, or does say, it doesn't essentially say, that we have to select three uh, architects for the specific job. Now, and we can select them from a list that we have on file. Back in May of last year, we did a general RFQ, request for qualifications, and architects could respond to that RFQ at that time. Uh, on January 26th, we had an interview committee, as, as Mr. Poor said, that was comprised of school staff and administrators, and the consensus of that committee uh, is before you tonight, that recommendation. So that, in a nutshell, I hope I explained it, is the process. Only other thing, Mr. Paradis, that I think would help uh, just so for our public in particular is, you know, an architect firm and later when we do contractors, 
they have to have the capacity to do a, a project like that just to get into the opportunity to be considered. Can you just share quickly what that means? Yeah, actually the statute addresses that. It, it uh, as part of the RFQ, that's one of the specific questions that we ask, your capacity and capability to perform the work. So we certainly did ask that question as part of the RFQ. Thank you. So, so the last time we actually did RFQ was when we were getting ready to do Pinnacle View School along with uh, the design for uh, Little Rock Southwest. So we thought it was time to refresh that list there, uh, make sure we included anybody that, sit, that wanted to do business with Little Rock that wasn't on the original list. And we went through that list before and actually picked the top three and ranked the top three. So you had uh, WR, I think, for the Pinnacle View. You had Polk Stanley Wilcox. And then you had Cromwell for was working on the K-8 uh, during that time. So we wanted, we expected one day that our millage extension would pass. So we wanted to have this in place, a, a RFQ for the architects along with the, the CMs as well. When we get to the, the part, I'm choosing them early in March. So, but very, I think, how many did we have respond to? Was it? 21, so it was a pretty pretty good group, so. And, and just one final thing to maybe set up for the board. Um, we had a committee, the percentage or number of who made, approved or said that they wanted to have um, Polk Stanley for the Central High job. Can you share that? Yes, the, committee, the interview committee was comprised of five school staff and five administrators. And for Central, nine of the 10 uh, individuals voted for uh, Polk Stanley to do the work. So it certainly was a consensus. And I'm gonna just pull these up on, I think y'all have these attached, but this is Polk Stanley. And it's uh, quite a few pages on there for you all to look through. Uh, you all know the capability that you were out at Southwest this past, what night was it, Wednesday? Monday night, Tuesday. Now. Tuesday, Tuesday. So you got to see a facility they designed out there. So they are very well qualified. Everybody that we interviewed were very well qualified. So we could have picked any of the three that we interviewed for each project, but these were the ones that the committee felt best fit for these particular projects. Thank you. Ms. Nolan. Was that part of the discussions with the architecture firm about matching the style or how we will address that Now, you that had part Nancy Russo in the room on the okay. committee, so <laughs> do I need to say anything okay. further? Okay. Not, and, okay, you had our staff as well. So, uh, of course, you know Ms. Russo is married to architect yes. as well. So she's thought about this for a long time because we've talked about science wings and different other wings at Central for a long time, before my time even here. So. A lot of thought out and that, that was very important as far as and diversity of the firm. So that was an important part in making sure they have women represented and minorities represented, in, especially with Central, the historical nature of Central as well. So all that was thought out. So I, I, like I said, I think any of these three could do it, but Polk Stanley Wilcox was the one that Could I to add to that answer too? If you look at the scope of work that Polk Stanley has done right here in the central part of the city, so we think about Southwest because that's ours, but they also did the Robinson Theater. They also are involved at the Arkansas Arts uh, Museum that's just yeah. getting to open up. And there are multiple other projects as you scroll in there that can show uh, things that they've done um, right here in the city in the central part. So it kind of shows you know, their ability to work with, when you're talking about this part of this city, you have limited space a lot of times, and you have the historical design uh, and archaic plumbing and architecture that you have to deal with. Um, so they're, they're very well equipped for that. Hmm. Ms. Callaway. Um, will Central be historical standing with the, uh, explain that to me. So I mean, you have criteria that we have to go by. So it's on the National Register, so they yeah. have various organizations they have to check with during the process. So this process is probably gonna take nine to 12 months, I think, for the design, depending on how much public feedback and input and different things and coming before you all and meeting with that staff. And I mean, it's a back and forth quite a bit before they even start putting stuff on paper, really getting an understanding. So it's nothing we can do to, 
change in certain aspects of that building. We can't change anything from the front view. So the back view, I think when we talked about it, and Kevin may be the one to join us, but they're gonna make sure that it fits that building. So uh, you wouldn't go out and have a, a piece that looks like Southwest and attach it to the back of Central. Uh, so it's gonna be something that's aesthetically pleasing that fits there, so. Okay, can you, uh, can you also give a, give a timeline as far as when do you plan to start this? I say the design, I think the design is gonna take all of a year. So you have, Central is probably gonna be the most complex location we have to do any work on it because you have 2,400 kids, there's really no overflow room there, you have all the portables there, so it's gotta be a transition, plus all the, the infrastructure is old. So all the plumbing, all the electrical, all that stuff, so that's another part of the infrastructure that's around Central that has to be taken into consideration. Uh, I think once we dig more into the design later on, we'll know, I, I can't, I won't want to even ballpark it on there, but I don't know if. I'll just add to the comment that anything. when he says the design process, he's actually saying that we're not digging dirt, we're not doing anything that's con building, constructing, for at least, it's basically a, a, about a year before we'd even be able to think about that because it was gonna take that long to kind of create all the, 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 you gotta plan for this. And you gotta do it right on the planning end so that you don't end up having costs that you accrue as you start the construction process. And the different organization you're talking about for the National Park Service and different other things, we gotta get approval with the city mm -hmm. and different things. So you gotta jump through those with the design as well to make sure it, it passes. So I would think Central is at least a year. Uh, not sure what the construction time is as you transition, so. Okay, uh, another thing, Central was added late compare in comparison to the other uh, uh, buildings. That, uh, and uh, so would that be the last project or are you all gonna jump ahead and um, do Central before you do Southwest, I mean, excuse me, West High School? I, I don't, I think it just You gonna do it at the same time? Depending on the design project, because each one of them has a different architect. And so each one of them can be on actually a two different time frames. So I don't think we just hadn't mapped out that until you actually get through that design process. Uh, so West, I think, is gonna be an easier campus probably to deal with just with the space. It doesn't have as many space constraints, but I mean, it may be more community involvement there. It could be a whole lot of other things that the staff and you all wanna see in that design. So uh, I don't think it's uh, jumping ahead. Only the project we got ahead right now is the Cloverdale McClellan site that we've broken ground, but I mean, that's really the. And I'll add to the going, comment, so. if I can, Mr. Bailey, that I think that you know the reason we're bringing these in together is that they're both complex projects to be real. Um, just like the comment in public comment tonight about trans traffic flow up there. That, that's a, that's a, when you go try to add a campus, and you're gonna go try to get a total of 1,200 kids up there, and that would be an additional 800 more than what we thought was a capacity. There's some things you have to really be worked on up there, and then it doesn't take much to think about the rock wall up there. I mean, there's, th that comp complex is also complex. So, um, sorry, that was bad words, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I see my lawyer friend down there telling me I shouldn't have said it that way, but it was, it was, it, it's, it's gonna be its own challenge, but we're, we're trying to have both these things, they're both big projects, and we wanna make sure that they get going as quick as we can because um, we're still, by the time it really gets into, you know, kids being in seats, that could be, you know, two and a half years out at least uh, from this date. Now that's what I was saying. That's what I was asking. Oh, you, I thought you were saying leapfrogging. I don't, we really can't tell till we get to that point of design, <laughs> depending on how long each one of them can take. But, uh, okay, yeah. but I also felt that Central was brought in later, and so, you need to kind of look at West first, but since you said you're gonna work on you're gonna work on both of those at the same time, well, are you, and, and are you going to be working on three projects at the same time, well, like the McClellan, which I hope you change the name, we change the name, and um, those other uh, uh, projects with Central and West. Central was like late. Let me take a stab at that uh, with you, Ms. Calway. The, um, we actually, 
on, on how we built our plan of projects, they all came in at the same time. So Central and West, it was always described to the public, to you as a board, as a part of our package right from the get-go. So we've, we've always had those things coming in at the same time. And, and we want to, Mr. Bailey's already said it, but we want to reemphasize that the, the building at, at Cloverdale and moving Cloverdale out to go towards McClellan, that's already going, okay? We've already got the design complete. We have contractors there. We're about ready to go into the uh, demolition phase. It's already kind of began on the inside of it. I mean, that's, that's happening, okay? That's number one priority, always has, always will be. We want that to be our number one priority. We want that building finished so that we can get those kids in as quick as possible. These other things are works in progress and they're just on track like we had described it to the public. And I think that's what I hope uh, we leave this mean with and that can be shared out that this is exactly what we shared with the public from the get go uh, as we started to talk about the potential of even going out to the voters. It was always this package. Another question. Uh, now, is there going to be a ceremonial, you know, uh, uh, turning of the dirt? We will, and uh, we, Ms. Smith and I take great pride in, in creating those opportunities. So we, w when we get to a place where we can turn the dirt, uh, and, and we've already talked to Cromwell and to Clark Construction about the, the kind of the high expectations we'll have there, um, that's already in place. We already have in place that every week once we start to actually, once we've dug dirt, every week you will actually have a drone video going over that. In the past, when we did Southwest, it was once a month. Clark Construction and um, Cromwell have said, we're gonna do it every week so everybody can just keep following the progress of the building. So um, that's gonna be a good thing, too. I don't know, if, I don't, that's not what I'm saying. Like, for instance, the board members would go out there. Absolutely. That's what we're saying, yes, okay. absolutely. And yeah. you're gonna do that every week? No, that's just the drone that's gonna okay. fly over it and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Progress. The progress. Okay. Sorry progress. about that if I can. Didn't say okay. Thank you, Ms. Callaway. Uh, do we have other any other questions on this particular thing about the proposal for the architect for Central? Any other questions from the board? Um, yes, yes, Ms. Yeah, Hatter. So I know I missed the, most of the discussion, and and it probably would have already been discussed. So um, with the architecture uh, proposal, you guys are doing that as right as a joint package together tell me like okay I'm sorry on on, on, on the west on, on we have the central and then the west high school and then those are separate action items that's correct okay um, and which action item are we on are we on west central I mean what we we're on the first one on, on the central high oh okay all right um, okay I'm just gonna sit back and uh, I, want, I, make a I do have some questions, but I'm not sure if, if they was already answered, so I'm just going to hold them for a second. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hatter. Mr. Mason? I'm ready for the motion. All right, sir. I move that LRSD School Board authorize the administration to enter into contract negotiation with Pope Stanley Wilcox Architects for the work <sighs> contemplated for Central High School. I second that motion. Thank you. So that motion has been made by Mr. Mason. I heard two seconds. Like Ms. Johnson, was that Ms. Johnson and and Ms. Johnson. Ms. Wilson? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, is there any further discussion from the board? I have a question. My question is this. I know what it is. So um, with us starting construction to expand, are we within the um, how, how, how does the settlement agreement uh, fold into this? Because it says uh, no new construction. So in the construction world, from what I understand, and I'm not there, but construction starts once once um, <coughs> architecture plans and floor plans are is designed. So are, are we good on that, on that settlement? And I know that's a legal question. Well, we, we do believe we are, and I've talked to Mr. Heller about that. And um, we believe that we have been upfront about what we were going to do from the get-go. Um, and if there is a legal challenge, we will we will tackle that. But we do believe we have because 
we have prioritized the project at McClellan. We have that in place. We have the design already complete. It's ready to go to work, and you're actually going to start to see things going up out of the ground after the, the groundbreaking ceremony um, in just a short matter of time. So that project gets going. Now the design part, and this is what you missed, Ms. Hatter, is that we've talked about the length of what that design project is going to be uh, for either one of these campuses. And so, you know, we should be in the final stages of the McClellan project um, and having it complete exactly as planned, and then we start the construction on the other two that we have in front of us behind that. Okay, and so, can, okay, so the design is gonna start, which is part of construction, I guess the pre-planning of construction, and we're still within that, that, that Doe versus LRSD settlement where it says that um, no new construction or expansion of classrooms is able to happen until after children are, ex are attending that school in we, Southwest, the we, K-8 now? We certainly believe that, yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, do we have a legal? Do yes, I just said that, Mr. Heller from Friday Firm. Okay, is it in writing? No, ma'am, it's not. Thank you. Any other, yes, Ms. Nolan? I have one quick question. We've talked previously on the board about um, minority um, contracting goals and about you know wanting to make sure that we are really reaching out to minority and women-owned businesses. Was that part of the discussion as these were evaluated? It and was, can you just yes. speak to that a little bit? Yes, and I don't know if you want to come up, but that was one of the, one of the guiding questions that we had for both firms, so they have to tell how they're actually participating or trying to improve that minority and women business enterprise. So uh, I think all the agencies are attempting to do it. Uh, the other part is when you get the CM, the construction management companies in, and actually that's where the majority of your money is gonna go. So that's another phase that we've looked, and I mean we've done it for the past, major, all the major projects. It's actually y'all have, what well, we have a board goal now as well. So. Uh, those are things, uh, and I don't know if you want to speak or if you want to speak, but I think, well, these, both of these, I think, are going to be good with that, in that area. So the next phase is construction management. So that's the big part, really bringing in those subs and reaching out there to those minority and women-owned business enterprises to make sure they have an opportunity to bid on projects. So. Do you have a list? Of minority business? Mm -hmm. I don't. We have a list of vendors that we have identified. Uh, but there's other vendors out there that just hadn't signed up for us. So that's part of them actually going out there soliciting those minority vendors and women-owned businesses to try to get them to participate. So then we will update you all on a monthly basis actually on that, that spin. Like for this month, you'll see a new report that Mr. Paradin is in this department has submitted to show the minority participation in, in spin. So you'll see, I think Conrail is out there for like 240,000 that started on the uh, McClellan site right now, so. Any other question or comment? All right. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to authorize administration to enter contract negotiations with Polk Stanley Wilcox for the work contemplated for Central High, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? There's none, so motion passes. Nine zero. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Poor. The next recommendation regarding West Little Rock West High School. Thank you. I, a lot of the conversation probably really sets the stage for this one um, because it's there's very similar things. We brought three firms in uh, that were evaluated. We had um, a team of both uh, teachers and, and the administrators from um, West High uh, Re Innovation School. And then our five, um, we had, you know, really good discussions with all three firms. And one of the things I'd like to say is, I think we ought to take pride as a district that we are really only looking at local firms. You know, that's money being reinvested back into our community. That doesn't always happen. Okay, there are firms that um, get hired that come out of Kansas City or Dallas to do projects. This district is hiring firms right here in Little Rock. The other unique thing about this particular firm that's being recommended to you with Lewis Architects is that 
they've never done work with the district. So I think that shows that we were very open-minded um, in our approach to listening to- No major work. No major work, <laughs> okay, sorry, no major work. Of magnitude. Thank you for correction. Um, they, I off, now I'm off my target, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't want to do that. No, I, 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 they, they came in and won the job. And, and uh, again, a local firm, they're actually located very close to Pinnacle View, as we understand it, or I understand it. And um, they have done a lot of work that, that shows uh, that similar work, kind of like what we talked about with Central, that some of the things we envision for West, they've done some of those types of things in uh, campuses around uh, the state. So they're, uh, they've done a lot of schoolwork, uh, this firm, just not on a major uh, level uh, for Little Rock School District. Mr. Bailey, anything to add? Yeah, I think we're excited to have opportunity to work with them. It's the same way with Cromwell. Over the years, you know, we've done business. We just hadn't done a whole lot of major construction on Little Rock, just to be honest, outside of, the, you know, some rebuilding in the past, like the, the Stevens way back to go, and then you had Roberts, then you had Pinnacle View in the high school. So uh, it's, it's, it's exciting to, to be able to work with some of these newer firms. So this firm has worked a lot with Cabot, uh, Conway, Bryant, I mean, they have uh, Moralton, they have worked all around the state. So like I said on the last round, I think any three of these firms that we interviewed could do the job, but this was one that the committee felt the strongest and the, the best to fit for this actual project. And Mr. Bailey or Mr. Paradis, I, I wouldn't mind giving the percentage on this one too since we did it on the last one. Was it the same, was it nine one? Nine, nine out of 10, yes. Nine out of 10? All right, thank you. Board members, questions regarding this project? Mr. Hearing no Adams. questions, I wonder about a, a mo uh, Mr. Wood. Mr. Adams, can I make a motion? Certainly. I move that the LRSD school board authorize the administration to enter into contract negotiations with Lewis Architects for the work contemplated at the new Little Rock West High School. I second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Wood, for the motion. Thank you, Mr. Wilson for the second, so we have the motion on the floor to authorize this uh, architect firm, the Lewis firm. Are there, are there any further questions or discussion? Um, I, I have a discussion, I have a question. Yes, Ms. Hatter. Um, so out of everyone, because I'm looking them up and it's all, it's all male um, firm, so were there not any uh, women-owned or minority-owned firms that to bid on this? And how did they fare? And fare, and then, uh, and two, I think it's, um, and then does the does the district has have a history of of, of hiring those type firms, a minority-owned firm, uh, right to be the parent um, contractor? Um, and then not just a, you know, and, and not be a sub, a subcontractor to um, projects. Thank you for the question. Um, I, I, I will start, we did cover some of this in terms of before you arrived, of just the, the process and the, the, the key thing, and we opened up for an RFP, um, we shared this earlier um, to allow other firms to come in. And then the key then is to try to determine as a part of that process of a request for qualifications is determining what their capacity is to do this level of work. Um, and so the, to the best of my knowledge, and, and maybe I can stand corrected from Mr. Bailey, Mr. Yarberry, or Mr. Paradis, I don't believe that there is a minority owned firm that had the capacity or had put in to do this work. I, don't know, I think we have one WB on the list and that was uh yes right um, for good evening so we did have one that submitted to the rfq it was a woman uh, business enterprise um, but they are a much smaller firm um, they have done some work for us in the past but it was more in the um, a remodeling type um, scenario um, however they have partnered with other firms also uh, historically on some other projects um, but they certainly do not have the capacity a project of this magnitude. So what you're talking about, Ms. Hat, is when we actually get a CM and they actually put those bids out, instead of putting a bid out that just say maybe $10 million, they may break it up in three smaller bids. So 
those smaller uh, companies that may not have the capacity to bond 10 million, they can bond 3 million and still do the work and it doesn't just separate them, just exclude them out of the project. So those are things we have to look at and that was one of the things we talked about on the, uh, with uh, Clark Construction and Conrail as well. They broke those packages up more so you might have just, and Mr. Poor, I don't know if you want to. That, that comes yes. through the construction management That's part process of the management part. and then us coming up with a guaranteed maximum price. So that phase where more minority contractors, vendors um, can get involved, that really happens on that next phase. Um, but again, on architects, the answer to your question is there is, was not a minority or woman owned firm put in for the RFQ that had the capacity to take on this size of a project. But that we, for the minority spend, we, we've done it in the district as well. So when we outsource at one time the landscaping thing, so we might not have a, a minority firm that could take on the whole district, but we broke it up in quadrants so we could have more participation. So uh, those are things that we look for our construction management companies to do in those situations. So. But that's the next phase. Uh, the majority of the money is going to be spent toward construction, so not in the design phase. And that's where we, we're going to get more participation in minority and women-owned businesses. Okay. And do and um, and and this to uh, like when so when will construction? I mean, once once the um, architect is same. My my same comment as to the last one. That is when the the um, construction begins, and so we are within um, that Doe versus LRSD settlement as it's, as it's written. I mean, well, that's more still, of a legal question. It's still gonna depend on us getting approved as well. So as you get through that design phase and you, uh, if you put it out for bid at that time and bids come back favorable when you wanna start the project, you move forward at that point. So that necessarily means this is the point that you gotta get to planning and get designed. Like for the, the K-8 we're building now, that design was finished three years ago. The right. school would act like an operation if we would have passed the millage in 2017. The kids would have been in there probably a year by now, but we just had to lay it aside until we actually have had the funding. So this allows you to go through that process, which is a, a pretty tedious process to have, you know, people involved in that and go through that planning. I mean, it's a lot of programming because they bring all the department chairs in. They're going to bring, you know, literacy people in and math people and all that in there and do all that planning. They go back. Sometimes they get it right. Sometimes it just needs to be a little bit adjusted. They're presented to you all as well, and it's kind of back and forth. So uh, then the phase goes out to construction, and you, you make a determination then when you get to bid in a GFP. So all those things have to come back to you for approval. Similar to this, once we get negotiated in the contract, we bring the contract back uh, for board approval, move forward. Uh, CM, the same thing. You get that, bring it back for approval, and move forward. So The key okay. is construction doesn't really begin until after you've gone through all those phases. And that's what we spend a lot of time on, just kind of in the beginning of the meeting, of just talking about that process of how that takes, a, it's gonna probably, as Mr. Bailey estimated, at least a year. Um, and and it, it's not just the design, it's also the approval process, so just to repeat that. Thank you, Ms. Hatter. Other, any other questions or comments? Hearing none. Then let's, we'll move to a vote. So all in favor that the board authorizes administration entering a contract negotiation with the architects for the work contemplated for the Little Rock West High School, please say aye. Aye. And if you're opposed, please say no. Motion passed is 9-0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Paradise, Mr. Yarberry, Mr. Bailey for your work. And we, we look forward to the next steps on these projects. Board members, the other piece on the special meeting is an executive session. So I would ask that if, um, if there are no objections, that we go into executive session to discuss personnel matters, then we shall do that. So any objections to that? Hearing none, then that is approved that we are going into executive session to discuss personnel matters at this time.